All right, now that we're done with all the audio stuff in STL, I can put the music stream back on. And yeah, we should be good to go. What were the last things we're gonna do? We're going to get the waiting for key press going, I think. So I think that we can do this pretty easily. I think what we can do is we can skip calling CPU step if CPU.waiting for key press. Then we'll skip that. And then on a key down, if CPU waiting for key press, we can call something here. Um, let's just call it key pressed. Key. And we actually want to get back the key index. It's a little bit of a pain. Hmm. I think what I will do is I'll just return the key index. And then we will shift this like that. that and then we can call key pressed here with the key and now we need to write that method and what will this be this will just be a byte right? so now waiting for key press is false and we're gonna put something into that register for key press, right. It's equal to key, and the opcode is going to be this thing, and then PC plus equals two. Okay, so if waiting for key press happens, this should, this should never occur here. So, uh, do not call step when waiting for key press is set. Okay, so if waiting for key press is set, uh, our program counter was rewound to this opcode so that we could use it to get the correct V value to place the key into. And then that's it. Now this is probably, yeah, I think that should be good. So now we support key presses. We're going to want to convert this to a byte. And I think that's about it. So the last things we'll do, we'll wrap this back in its try and we'll write the messages out to the console. We don't need the sound timer code in there. And everything else looks pretty good. We have no big chunks of commented out code or unused code. So the last step I'll do here is I'm gonna wipe out all of the stuff that we don't need from the project. And then I'll add in a CPU.cs and I'll copy this CPU into that place. I think that's it. Okay, and then all we need to do is add system diagnostics. We'll even sort those usings. And let's just run it to make sure everything still works. What's happening now? Ah, if we're not waiting for key press. There we go. Okay. Looks like it's kind of working. All right, with that, I'm pretty happy. Um, I mean, there, there's probably still some bugs in it somewhere. 
but it seems to be running most of the games we try out. So I think I'm going to say that our Chip 8 simulator interpreter is looking pretty good. We've implemented all the major features. There is some code cleanup we could do to make some of this stuff a bit nicer, some encapsulation, but I'm going to go ahead and commit this to Git and call it a day. And I think I'd like to start taking on a bigger emulator in the next couple of days. Uh, so maybe even starting with some maybe NES. Uh, again, I know nothing about it. I know nothing about writing an emulator except for this Chip 8 stuff, but I think it'd be fun to go through and I think it's fun to record it and talk through it and, uh, and see how this kind of stuff is done. Not professionally done, because I'm definitely not a professional in this, but at least just uh, do the research and figure out how to put something together that hopefully works. Hopefully you enjoyed this series on the uh, Chip 8 and hopefully we can look forward to more videos and as always, have fun programming.